control tires are also flawed so i don't need to talk much about it no let's let's start having a little bit deeper aspects of it that i am not a let me have a disclaimer here i am not a statistician neither trying to become one let me be a clinician and i'm just putting forward a clinician's grievances to the expert analyst that where our greed to generate evidences has led us to we need everything we need evidence for everything and that's what he is trying to we try to keep on writing and digging into that trying to generate evidence for everything and as i said on the top of the pyramid which is shown couple of times here that meta analysis is it the pinnacle of evidence based medicine or it is it just it's just ultimate sanjeevni that's the best evidence we ever get on that topic or it is a super processed food it everything mention on his wrapper that it contains x y z vitamins macronutrient micronutrient zinc copper da 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 but what is lost in the processing is never stated so i would call it is the super processed food so uh, again as uh, suresh mentioned that let's start with the definition because it's like it's it, that's the fashion uh, statistical synthesis of the numerical results of several trials which are all address the same question that's very very good to start with statistician has a double chance to either test or twist this data before they can conclude why first they want to have a masterly application of the statistical test on the individual trials they have found and they apply a new battery of test to produce a new sets of odd ratio or confidence interval or statistical intelligence uh, and to find out a statistical significance so this is all which goes into from converting into expert review into a meta analysis what is the difference between expert review when a expert review the literature and he start explaining as if he is taught teaching a student that okay fine this is what i found from the literature and this is what i believe and this is what i will practice i think that's what we all as a clinician would love to listen to but now that that joy is taken away by the statistician that okay fine no i am going to remove your subjective bias i am going to put this all let me first find out the form form a question then found number of studies work hard to find as many studies as you can then try to tabulate it then try to apply certain mathematical jargons to scrutinize that okay i won't include this study i would exclude this study i would like this i would not like this and then come to a, a master table and then apply again the clinical uh, the statistical uh, model and then come out with a forest chart and that's what we call meta analysis it's, it's like a uh, quantitative systemic review is a meta analysis in doing all see what we have lost i won't go into this this is already shown multiple times that this is a super filtered data meta analysis is nothing but a super filtered data and let me tell you certain uh, lean pauling the uh, linus pauling he is a guy who believed a lot in vitamins and he, he at one time come to conclusion that nearly all diseases can be traced to nutritional deficiency and he wrote couple of books also on vitamin c helps you live longer and live better because he, whatever he wrote read he come across the studies and he end up in conclusion that wow this is the best thing to have in life but i, I would uh, without changing the words i would love this uh, to re read this word by word is leonard pauling did not deliberately intend to deceive his readers but since his enthusiasm for his espoused cause of cause outweighed his scientific objectivity he was unaware of the selection bias influencing his choice of he was not actually even thinking about what he has missed because he want to read particular thing everything which is was in favor of this his what his belief he concluded in his review and that systemic review becomes a big bias and this is not a small guy he is a guy who has won the nobel prize for twice so but this was unproved just in 8 years time that in uh, when uh, nipschel did the meta analysis that even if you take grams of vitamin c it's not going to prevent even if at all you have so you are suffering from common cold taking grams of vitamin c can reduce the duration and the suffering maybe perhaps by 10% only so that means he said whatever lin pauling was believing is untrue mind well both were the reviews this was a systemic review but what it came to that he, nipschel and his team has really had a rigorous search just by medline search he could found 22 studies from references to references to references he could go up to 44 studies but then he actually contacted the experts in the world and did really really hard work to find out i should not miss a single one why is it that his bias in mind that i want to prove pauling wrong 
probably yes. And in doing so, he put lot of hard work. He found 61 trials that vitamin C and common cold in its duration. But what average researchers would have done? They would not do all this. So, if they do only Medline search, they would have found only 36 percent of the 61 trials. So, it is number of how much, how many trials you find and how much efforts you put into that forms your raw data. And then you start your analysis on. If your raw data is wrong or inadequate or biased, then you start from the scratch one. You are wrong from the day one. And this is what will happen that frequently, how many of us have ever read an article in Chinese or a Japanese? How much we have ever tried to look for data which is not in English, which are not published? Computer will show you only what is published. But if you ask the experts of the respective people in the world, they might say, okay, I tried, but I failed. But there is a publication bias. You will always tend to publish what is when you succeeded in your concept. When you failed in the concept, that's what you said that, okay, fine, critical trial, dot gov, etc., etc., are the efforts to look for the failed attempts, which are never found when you start doing the meta analysis. So, I would use the word, I will find what I like, I will show what I like, and so I conclude what I like. And that's what many of the times the metabolic, metallic, meta analysis ends up to. And that's what is the risk of bias. So, as the meta analytic process is getting more and more refined, there is a specific space for selection bias, performance bias, detection bias, at, 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 Attrition bias, reporting bias, I am not a statistician, I literally have to read the slides. So, there's so many types of biases that they have to look into and based on that bias as well as methodological quality, precision of the result as well as external validity, they have to weigh the evidence that if I have 10 trials, which one is most important. And out of, by weighing that, they conclude that okay, fine. Now, up after putting all this together, then as it a lot of talk about that which type of can, patients are selected in that particular studies. Are there overlap or the different studies that have, were done on a different uh, subsets of patients. So, based on that you will find a heterogeneity or homogeneity. If your sample selected at the end, the total number of patients that you pool up to is not homogeneous, then your conclu conclusion are unlikely to be answering the questions and that's what is statistically tested by various tests either uh, and simply can be looked at the forest chart and you can see whether the uh, confidence interval overlap and etc etc so if you're starting your material is wrong it's a gigo go garbage in garbage out it's a you and that's what is hap happening large amount of studies are selected they are put through up uh, into computer and the computer analyzes and gives you a number and the effect and the com confidence interval just enough to put a forest graph. So, anybody and everybody started concluding on meta analysis and that is the way the meta analysis would look well and then multiple explanations so on. So, I am going to tell about one uh, hypothetical trials and meta, meta analysis done just to explain how the uh, subset analysis or the way exclusion or inclusion of a particular trial can change the result of meta analysis. Like a miracle of dias, ther dias therapy, dias that we play for stroke, fact and fictional pro uh, product of subgroup analysis. As you can see here, the, the green square, if I include all the studies, then you will never find that, that this dias therapy helps. But if I decide that I want to exclude, I do not like the red color, I want to exclude the diasis or the trace dias done by the red therapy. So, it started becoming okay fine, it looks like it is started to favor. Then if you try to further scrutinize it, I want to focus only on to the published trials and those regards disregard others, then it becomes more significant. That means, even in the meta analysis, you can read what you want to. That's what it matters, and the number of meta analysis is increasing day by day, day by day, and it is galore. And uh, I like what uh, uh, Hans Isaac said that if a medical treatment has an effect so obscure that it needs a meta analysis to establish it, then I would not be happy to be used on me. Forget about what you want to do the world, but don't use on me. And he pointed out certain X Y Z limitations that if I the, in medicine, 1 is good, 2 is good, 3 is good, 10 may not be good. 
so there is no linearity in the results all the time there it cannot be a multi single factor affecting the outcome as i am going to give in a next next lecture icp icp guided treatment or use of pa catheter and outcome these are measuring it's like monitoring tools you can't do a study or and expect a monitoring tool without standardizing the treatment to have a better outcome and that's why anything and everything can be processed because you can whatever you enter into computer it will give you an an answer this is very uh, uh, alarmingly said and the title of the uh, this literature was mass production of systemic reviews and meta analysis and exercise in mega silliness and really love to listen i would encourage every one of you that i i really love to listen and whatever it it's like 21 trials or meta analysis was done on one topic in 7 years everybody wants to do it it's like statin for atrial fibrillation in cardiac surgery published within period of 7 years and the uh, expert says that a disturbing picture of current state of affairs where researchers are producing in epidemic proportions systemic reviews and meta analysis that are redundant misleading and serving vested interest now because you can twist the uh, computer and the technical way to so actually look at the quality of the meta analysis it's like 22 in 2014 680 reviews were or systemic or meta analysis were published out of which that means 22 per day majority didn't has the review of biases up almost a third didn't have a detailing about use of protocol search logic methods of data extraction funding source and a third used statistical method that are discouraged by the standard systemic review doing organizations like cochrane so why we are doing so many analysis why we are seeing so many meta analysis in the journals because one the ideal def, uh, reason why we should be doing it this is in making body wants to say that okay fine this therapy this therapy works or do not work uh, let put ask the question to the expert they will sum up the data do the meta analysis and guide but most of the researchers who because of publish and perish mentality they keep on writing it journal editors to increase their impact factors they encourage it certain biomedical journals they just want to get the process going they encourage and invite such reviews industry employees sometimes they use this material for marketing purpose or there many of predatory they use the word predatory journals you pay for your article to get published and that's the way more and more articles are reaching to the journals so we have to be very careful i don't want to intend to read all this but i'm just going to show two meta analysis it's like one published in jama in 1995 about efficacy of screening of mammography it says that there is no reduction in the breast cancer mortality in women at, at this age group and the second meta analysis in the same year published in different journal by the different days he said that definitely that it reduces the mortality now how do i conclude about it so meaning thereby just like we read the fine prints of the randomized control trial we need to read the fine prints of the meta analysis as well now which is now critical care herin early goal directed therapy does it work sir it works in 2001 it doesn't work in 2017 has the model of human being changed no we have evolved uh, what after the emmanuel revolve we say we are more sensitized about the time targeted resuscitation starting from the emergency department and that improvement has already taken place our treatment paradigm has improved so now you will not get the statistical differences if you analyze that study again in 2015 so does that principle goes away no so that is reflected by if you look at the four systemic or the meta analysis done on this topic two says no two says yes but look at the heterogeneity the type of randomized or non randomized control trials how many years the data they have included etc etc these are the fine prints we need to look at before we conclude on this and meta analysis and the systemic review is the one of brain child of this guy archie cochrane and he, he didn't found the cochrane database it's in fact that database was found by his colleague uh, uh, lane chambers uh, lamber sorry and now more than 30 37000 volunteers maintain it now what every one of you will agree with me that if you read a cochrane database or cochrane uh, systemic review most of it they are inconclusive that we don't have enough data to suggest or conclude on this topic but that's what the fact is if you try to simplify the science let it remain the complex as it is let it remain that okay it is an imperfect 
the day science will become perfect we will all be behind bars because then it will be mandatory for each and everybody to follow x y z way you will not be allowed to think no i don't think science is that simple and that's the reason why it's like i'll take you the one blobogram this blobogram what is included in the cochrane database or uh, logo is the role use of corticosteroid in pregnant female to prevent uh, to uh, what you call uh, facilitate fetal lung maturity when it was started it is only seven trials now it is 30 trials now the same systematic review when it is re reviewed last year or oh, sorry this year now it is 270 page review that's what the science is actually the complex and let's not so what meta analysis my last few slides that what the meta analysis it is believed to be pillar of the evidence based medicine and we said that it searches all the relevant studies and should not miss any but it misses and rejected many of the relevant trials and that's why sometimes done intentionally sometimes unintentionally it should refine and make the data manageable sometimes by refining the data you get the data get distorted and biased it should increase the efficiency of the research because 10 small trials cannot conclude put it together and it will conclude that's what has happened in that cochrane database uh, the what do you call the trial but it adds when you have multiple meta analysis done by the multiple people adds it to adds to confusion and doesn't let you conclude the topic for which the for the meta analysis was done the generalizability should be there to much wider population as you include trials of from different 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 populations but when you say generalizability the analysis are too greedy to increase the precision of the effect so they reject many of the trial to increase the homogeneity in the end result and that's why the generalizability is compromised reliability done by the experts without any wasted interest or conflict of interest no now we have so many people doing the meta analysis with the wasted interest to so be careful about it power and the precision more and more number of people it's uh, more patients so the it should be it was viewed as ultimate evidence but it once it loses the generalizability where for precision or left inconclusive for decades that's what cochrane database end up in multiple analyses are still decades decades after decade it still remain unconclusive so it doesn't serve the purpose for which the meta analysis was done so that's what i said that yes there is a lot of ado about it but it will be very very carefully read thank you very much